On the continuing track of looking beyond the inauguration itself, let's look at the first 100 days or what's projected to be, uh, what's projected to happen in the first 100 days of the uh, Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris administrations. First thing he wants to do is uh, uh, give coronavirus aid and and another $1.9 trillion COVID aid. Um, which is going to include a stimulus payment and unemployment, extended unemployment. Didn't we try this? Didn't we do this before? I feel like we just did this. Look, I understand Americans' um, memory is, is, is the equivalent of, of a goldfish, where people don't remember shit that happened like a week ago. Um, you know, like the only things we're not supposed to forget is 9-11 and the fact that uh, Trump, 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 we hate Trump, 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 orange man, bad, orange man, bad, Trump, 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 Trump. Those are the only things that are prevalent in American history. You know, contemporary American history, I should say, sorry. But, uh, come on, this was not that long ago that we tried this whole one-time stimulus plus extended unemployment. All the same people that got loopholed out, including myself and, I mean, a ton of other people that I know, uh, artists and comedians and, and, you know, people that are crazy poor and work under the table because they're that poor, um, they'll, they'll fall through the cracks. A simple way to do this is use census information and social security numbers to say if you have a social security number, then we will give you this unemployment benefit. Holy shit, a UBI. Oh man, what fun. But he's not, he's doing the same thing that they did before. All he's doing is, is you know, changing up the numbers. It's all surface level shit with this with with the Democratic Party. We tried. It failed. A lot of people were left to suffer in poverty. A lot of people didn't get their benefits. A lot of people didn't get their one-time payment. And who wins out in the end? It's Joe Biden. See, it's the federal government. It's corporations who got trillions of dollars. Jeff Bezos made an additional over $70 billion to his personal wealth. To his personal wealth. He's well on his way to become a trillionaire. And Biden wants to try that process again. Not only that, but this stimulus is this one-time stimulus payment, which, by the way, I'm not eligible for, um, is now fourteen hundred dollars. Interesting, wasn't it? That if Georgia won, this was a big deal. If Georgia won and went to the Democrats, that. Uh, we were going to get those $2,000? Wasn't that, wasn't that proposed? Was, didn't, didn't Joe Biden say that? Strange, now that it's $1,400. Oh, that's right. You got shifty with the numbers. He's going to say, well, we did give you $2,000. No, 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 no. You gave us $600 and then promised us $2,000 on top of that. Now you're, you're, you're sitting there and saying it's $1,400 plus that $600. That was the $2,000 I was talking about. You fudged it. That's not what you said. You should have made it clear. I will give you $2,000 total, which is inclusive of the $600. If you would have made a statement like that, everybody would have been like, man, no one gives a shit. Fuck off. 
and the Democratic Party ain't here to help us. And now they're showing now now they're showing it. They're showing their true colors. Again. Thought it was two thousand dollars, Joe. Why is it fourteen hundred? By the way, that saves the federal government a hundred and sixty four billion dollars that they can now put into war or corporate loopholes or help corporations out a little bit more. $164 billion more to pump into the Fed. Well, hell, the, the uh, Secretary of Treasury is, is a woman that runs the Fed. Get ready for that shit to happen. Where they'll get shifty about what they said. They won't really reveal the whole thing. And then they'll use semantics to fuck over the American people. Get ready for that shit to happen. And it will. Over and over again. And we're supposed to take these breadcrumbs as progress. That's that's an exhausting fucking argument to make. Isn't it? It's just like breadcrumbs of progress. It's like how long how long are fucking squishy liberals gonna make that argument? It's so fucking annoying to me. Well, at least, at least it's not super fascism. It's just crypto fascism. Oy vey. Proposed a $15 minimum wage. Cool. That would have been great 10 years ago. Minimum wage has not increased for a decade? More? Should have been 15, 10 years ago. When I got out of college, I should have been making $15 an hour minimum. Now it should be upwards of 30 probably. With, with, uh, it, might even, it might even be more than that. I'm not sure. The reason why they choose this $15 minimum wage, or, or they agree on $15 minimum wage, is because it's no longer a threat to the oligarchs. That amount isn't going to change the fact that the CEOs of a lot of these corporations are still going to make three to four hundred times that of the of, of a minimum wage employee. And yeah, this will this will help Americans, but you've bludgeoned them so hard with poverty that any sort of pay increase would have helped them. $2,000, just an additional $2,000 to their, to their annual income increases their, increases their livelihoods by 11%. 11%, just $2,000. That's not that much money. And it increases somebody's annual salary by 11%. Here's something else that he's proposed. This was in all the advertising advertisements that he put out there. 12.4% tax on people making $400,000 or more. Now, here's the question. Because again, I told you, this administration is going to be shifty. Are you cutting out are you cutting out tax loopholes for corporations and billionaires? Because for years now, they have paid next nothing or, or next to nothing um, in taxes. Under the Eisenhower administration, if you were a corporation, then you got taxed at 90%. So if you made a bunch of money, if you made millions and millions of dollars, then your corporation is getting taxed at 90% of that wealth. Because you could afford it. That is no longer the case, obviously. Because you have people like Jeff Bezos, who is close to being a trillionaire, paying zero in taxes. Because of, you know, little loopholes and 
oh, it's in stocks and it's in bonds and this is in the Caymans and this is uh, actually something that it, I've reinvested it into a cock ring that my wife got me. or And, and that is uh, tax deductible because then I donated to the cock ring to... Uh, to you know, young boys who are getting their first erections. So it's a donation. So I, don't, I can't be taxed on anything. Think about all those young boys that are getting those boners and not knowing what to do with them. And I donated this prestigious cock ring to them. That's fucking. It's him getting away with it. So are you canceling those loopholes? Because what then? What what'll happen then is is. These, these corporations will end up paying taxes, but they'll only end up paying taxes on $400,000 when they're making upwards of billions and trillions of dollars. Is Joe Biden canceling those loopholes? It's likely that he's not. It's likely that those loopholes are going to stay exactly where the fuck they are. And with a $15 an hour minimum wage, corporations are still going to hire people part-time. And that $15 an hour... Now, here's the other thing that you're supposed to do, that you should do, is you should put a freeze on the rent. You can't jack up your rents now, right? $15 minimum wage, uh, uh, you know, you raise a minimum wage to $15. Uh, and now that means that uh, landlords and... Um, you know, private industry can't just jack up the prices of their shit. So there should be a freeze on that. That should be part of the $15 an hour minimum wage increase. Again, they get shifty with it. Oh, we won the fight for the $15 minimum wage. Yay. Oh, shit. Everything's going back up. And now we're still stuck in fucking poverty. Which then perpetuates the crime rates because when you're when you're a desperate person, you do desperate things. It's the reality. You're still gonna keep people at part time. You're still not gonna offer them fucking health care, benefits, any of those sort of things. All of that is still going to be allowed for corporations to do, even though they have a $15 an hour minimum wage, which is still too low. So, again, shifty, shifty, not getting the whole story, leaving some details out to make yourself look nice. That's it. But you're still going to be a corporatist, anti-worker, fucking pro-billionaire president. Just like everybody else. This this let's return to the status quo where it's all nicey-nice and we can pretend like America is awesome. Now, there's another thing that's coming out of this, too which is state and local, state and local taxes. There's a cap on uh, major deductions for state and local at $10,000. This shit gets complicated as, as tax reform and tax codes always do. But there's a cap, right? You can't get more than $10,000 on deductions and uh, they're trying to make that unlimited. They're trying to remove this cap so that you can get how many ever deductions you need. And who is this going to affect is the top 1%. Again, like I mentioned, $2,000 to 60% of Americans is an 11% boost to their annual income. The top 1% would get, on average, uh, an additional $33,000 deductions in their taxes under this plan that Biden's putting out. So guess who, guess who gets fucked again? So he's not, it's, there's all these little loopholes. There's all these little shifty things that he's doing.
the math shows that by the end of Biden's fucking first 100 days, we're going to increase the, the, the income gap. A lot more people are going to be in poverty. When you have people in poverty that need to buy food, that need to figure out how to pay rent, that have to worry about how to ensure that their family is going to have health care. The most desperate of those, the most destitute of those, are probably going to start committing crimes. So this whole thing of, oh, well, we're going to decrease crime in America and all this other shit. Yeah, you criminalize poverty that way. And you go after poor people. You, you, you attack poor people. That's what you do. You haven't gotten rid of anything. You haven't made any, made life better for a majority of people. You made life better for billionaires. You made life better for corporations. I just saw something the other day where he's going to uh, stop the Keystone XL pipeline. There was a Supreme Court case that said, uh, we don't give a shit. Let the pipeline do whatever the fuck it wants. After all of this, the, the imperialism, the disrespect to the communities of color and immigrants and using them as tokens, after all of that, why are people still supporting the Democratic Party? Why are still people supporting Joe Biden and any of the fucking crypto-fascist imperialists in his fucking cabinet? If you want to push Joe Biden to the left, then it's time that we started enacting some general strikes. The trucking industry, the grocery industry, fucking agricultural industry, hair salons, they all decided to go on strike. That would huh, that would make him quake in his boots. And yeah, he would get shitty. And yeah, he would probably do the same thing that Trump did and send that National Guard after these folks. Spin some fucking McCarthyist lies about them. But when all that fails, Guess who has to be brought into the negotiating table? The working class people of America. Who haven't been at the working uh, at the negotiating table for upwards of, you know, close to 100 years now. It doesn't lie in in electoral politics. Change it doesn't lie in electoral politics. It it lies in direct action. And it lies in the way that people choose to live their lives. If you want a more compassionate government, you, we are going to have to become a more compassionate populace. A more educated and more uh, a, a populace that values critical thought. And this whole, well, Biden's in office, we can all go back to sleep bullshit. It's just going to keep perpetuating the same thing. And in four to six years, we'll see another fucking neo-fascist pop up. Happy inauguration, people. <laughs> Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. 
and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, um, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video. Thanks again.